Now, what is going on everybody? Today we are going to continue working on our dependency injection project. And in the last video we already started, so let's just jump back to the code. Um, so we already created this dependency injection setup function, which kind of registers all the stuff that we need for our dependency injection. And we also saw that within uh, our router here, we are relying on to get like an instance of the controller and not just the class itself. And uh, yeah, the way to do this is by actually using our uh, dependency injection container. So what the way this works or the way you can explicitly like request um, objects from like this container is by just importing it. So I'm just going to say, uh, should be dependency setup and I'm going to destructure the container and what you can just do is you can just say const dev controller equals uh, container dot resolve and then you can specify what object you need so remember we registered it as here we registered it as dev controller and what we're basically saying um, we tell the container hey please give, give us um, this controller over here and this is exactly what it's going to do so we will get our controller and with this controller we can basically plug this thing in here and then it should work now one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't actually called this setup method and I think a good place to do this would be inside of the server JS because the server itself just pretty much needs like all the dependencies. So in my opinion, it just makes sense to call it there. And um, the way that I would do this is I would just import like this setup method. And I'm just going to require it. So I would say dependency setup. Okay, that's pretty good. And now here's one little caveat. So you just saw that we are already using the dependency injection container inside of um, the router. And as soon as you import something, of course, it's going to execute the stuff that is already there. And since it's not just a class or a method, since it's just code, it's going to try to resolve the dependencies once it tries to import the router. And that is why it is important to call the setup method right here. So it basically has to be called before this router is imported, otherwise it will not work. Okay, so that's it pretty much for this setup. Now the only thing that is left to do, I would say, is to actually use dependency injection in our controllers. So instead of directly importing the service, I'm just going to delete this and I'm just going to make a constructor and I'm going to destructure whatever I need. In that case, I need uh, the dev service. So I will just say this dot dev service equals dev service. Okay, so I'm basically expect to get this dependency from the outside. And then when using dev service, I think we have to use this here as well. Okay, and now I'm not sure why this is yelling blank line between class members. Oh yeah. It's just ESLint. Cool, so that should be it, I would say. Um, I think there's one other caveat that we have in here. So the issue is that uh, this method here gets called by Express. And uh, if you've ever used JavaScript, you have probably run into uh, this uh, problem issues, like problems with this keyword, because this does not always refer to the class, but it refers to the outside context. So whatever is calling this method, this is this, so to say. And to make sure that this always refers to like the class member of, of dev service, um, we either have to make this an arrow function or uh, we have to bind uh, this to the context. So I'm just going to say create dev this dot create dev dot bind this. Now this is kind of a little bit weird and I think this is kind of like the ugly side of JavaScript I would say that 
if you use this inside of a method, then you would expect that this always refers to the class or to the object itself, but it doesn't. It refers to whatever is calling like this method. And to enforce that it always refers to uh, the current object, um, you can use a syntax like this or you use arrow functions. And the same thing we basically have to do for this get def method, although we're not using it too much. Okay, so there you have it. I think if we now search for dev service, yeah, we're always using this. That's pretty good. And I think we can move on to the um, service layer and they will basically have to do the same. So I'm just going to make a uh, oops, constructor here. Um, but this time around, I'm not going to destructure the service, of course, because we are currently in the service, but we will um, destructure the data access object. So we will say def data access object equals def data access object. Let's just format this and this is a little bit complaining. It's already declared in the upper scope. Oh yeah, <laughs> almost forgot. So of course we have to remove um, the import. So let's create this. And um, is there anything else we have to do? I don't think so. Um, I think we just have to use this every time we use this dev data access object. And by the way, now you might be wondering, well, but why don't I need this weird uh, bind syntax over here? Well, the reason is that uh, the service layer is never directly called by Express. It's just the controller that directly gets called. So that's why you might need it for the controller, but not for your service. Okay, so I think that's it pretty much. And now we can just move on to the uh, where is it to the data access object, I would say. Yep, here it is. So same thing. Only this time around, we are going to actually um, pull in like the database. So I'm just going to say this the database equals database. And let's search for database. So it's here and it is here. Ah, it's already there. I think I forgot to remove it when I was uh, refactoring it back but I think it should be fine yeah okay now we only need to remove that as well and I think we could be good to go like I'm not super sure maybe we forgot something but let's just uh, run this okay so it seems to be running uh, that's cool so let's test uh, this with Postman. So I'm just going to go in here. And by the way, in case you haven't truncated like your database, uh, just use like a unique email because otherwise it's going to complain because there's a unique constraint. Oops, and we already see there's an internal server. And now the question is what happened? So let's see. Oh, validate. This dot database is not a function in Okay, so apparently we did something wrong when injecting like the database. Okay, so now I'm not 100% sure what this could be because I think we did it correctly. Oh, um, I think we, yeah, we did it as value. Okay, hmm. to me it looks quite okay. Let's check. Let's check. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, is there anything else like in this? Uh, dot create dev. This dot db is not a function. Um, hmm. Maybe it's the same. Um, maybe it's the same issue that we had before but it shouldn't. Oh, <laughs> little obvious error. Yeah, uh, I accidentally put construct instead of constructor. Yeah, that's obviously wrong. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's sorry for that, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to uh, 
code and to talk, you know, you have to look into the camera, you have to write the code, you kind of have to uh, like explain the stuff. So sometimes I'm still getting the hang on it. So yeah, so that is the constructor. Cool. Um, let's try this again, shall we? Um, yeah. Okay, let's fire this. Yes. Nice. So I think this is working if we go to our uh, database and we say select star from developer and we execute this. Um, oh, set to say from developer. Bam, here it is. So you also see it's like yan2 at productioncode.com and it's properly separated. Nice. So that's it pretty much. So what we have done right now is we have the exact same functionality like we had before. The only difference now is that we use dependency injection properly. And this is actually going to help us a lot for testing. And I think we can start testing like in the next video because we are already over 10 minutes. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, also, please subscribe to the channel and uh, leave me a comment if you have a question. Uh, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And I've also put a link in the uh, description down below. So if you want to have a say in what we build next on this channel, if you have some idea for a project, if you want to see um, some particular project, um, then you can have a say by just signing up for this email list. And every once in a while, I'm just going to send an email along. So again, a thank you very much for watching. And in the next video, you're actually going to see why dependency injection is so incredibly useful for testing, because testing is now super easy. Cool. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.